I grew up with a stepfather who's a logger and a mom who worked full time. Despite both of them having their responsibilities, they showered us kids with basically anything we wanted without us being spoiled because we definitely worked for what we got. My stepfather raised us as equals, so if the boys had to go out and do firewood, Jen did firewood too. And the boys helped clean the house like Jen did. It was fair, and now that I look back on it, I really appreciate that and think that that's awesome that I got that opportunity. Jennifer, as a person before I enlisted, had come from a world of nothing but good. I was naive, I was happy, and I was hopeful about making real change in my lifetime. So that's what I went into the military with, was that kind of a mindset. Everyone has to go to a recruiter. Naively, I just trusted everybody. And this particular recruiter, who had a great reputation at the squadron for helping people who weren't ready, getting them ready to come in, he invited me to a new recruit party. I go to this quote unquote new recruit party. And when I get there, the minute I walked in the door, I felt that something was wrong, but I didn't know what. I uh, sat down and just kind of waited for the other new recruits to show up, of which they never did. While um, I was waiting for them to show up because I was excited to talk about our you know, what we're gonna go through and to go through it together and all that kind of stuff. Um, the recruiter was trying to push alcohol down my throat, um, like viciously, like drink, drink, drink. I eventually relented to at least one or two shots just to get him to calm down. And he must have slipped something in one of them because when I got to stand up to leave, I noticed that I was dizzy and um, ended up going into his living room and passing out on his couch. And when I woke up, he was picking me up and carrying me into his room, and I couldn't move, and he raped me. It wasn't until the next morning at 4 a.m. that I was like, what just happened? Where am I? I have no clothes on. And I hurriedly put my stuff on and like the typical cliche rape victim, I went home and I went in my shower and I cried. I didn't know what rape was. I didn't know to call it that. I beat myself up for going there, that I was stupid that I should have known better. I went away to, to basic, had a great experience, loved it, fell in love with the military and was like, I can see why people join the military now. This is really cool. It's nice to be a part of something so special. And I graduated and I went back home where I thought I'd be safe. I was so motivated. I was so gung ho. I mean, I was GI Jen for sure. I was in great shape. The job required both mental and physical ability. It was a combat support role, and I took it seriously. I got a call from my NCOIC who said, um, we want to hire you full time. So I went back and started working full time for them. Shortly after that, my NCOIC started in on me. I was trying to be cool about it. I tried to reason, but unfortunately, he escalated. At this point, I was starting to lose hope, thinking, I can't escape this. I do not want to have to tell my commander that this is happening. Everything I love is going to go down the tubes as I know it. I don't want to be that girl. It was a mandatory function that we all had to go to and I was upstairs kind of waiting on some friends, didn't know where his room was, just happened to be in this hallway, which was right outside of his room. He heard me, he opened the door in a drunken rage, pulled me in his room and threw me down on his bed. Someone came out of an adjoining bathroom and saw me struggling because he had me pinned down on the bed and was like, you know, what is going on here? And like pulled me from the situation and out into the hall. And that's when he came out and said, you know, I didn't want you anyway. 
I still didn't want to report, but I knew at this point I had to. We typically will blame ourselves for what happened when in fact you didn't do anything at all. The commander took it seriously. We pressed charges against them. They pled out guilty the day before the trial in an effort to keep things from going public. So I was then allowed to return to the squadron, which uh, turned into a nightmare for me. I was empowered that we won, but when I got to the squadron, they weren't so happy. I had to leave the squadron. Here's the beautiful part of the story. Had it not been for their retaliation and me changing to a new squadron, I never would have met Lee. The first time I saw her was in the NCO club. I was like, wow, I need to meet her. And the next night I saw her again, so I asked her if she'd like to come and sit with us, and we started talking, and it just went from there. He came up to my table, and he had those puppy dog eyes. And he just looked at me with that kindness, and he goes, do you want to sit at my table? And I was like, why, yes, I do. I remember she had the biggest blue eyes. She was just so nice and kind and fun, bubbly type of person. So, you know, we were just drawn to each other. I have PTSD as well, so I did understand PTSD and how it worked. I still can't imagine it myself. It's, it's really hard for me, not because I don't think it doesn't happen, just that people would be that cruel. I was involved with Wounded Warrior Project, and it was Wounded Warrior Project that told me about home base. My first meeting at home base was a complete and raw honesty with them about my struggles. I had tried to use exercise, healthy food, all the things that are recommended, and still felt like I was spinning out of control. You had these people sitting down and telling you every aspect of post-traumatic stress and TBI, which is traumatic brain injury, to help you compartmentalize the different issues because when you add them all together, they're overwhelming and you don't know where to start. I listened to everything they had to say and I was like, that fits in, that fits in, I get that, that's what's happening to me. All of it just clicked. Before I was floundering until home base. And when I left there, I had a plan that I could then implement. She was more open and willing to talk about things. Her whole mentality had changed to where, okay, maybe everything and everybody's not so bad. After seeing Jen come back with a newfound hope, it sold me on home base. I went through the program and, and it did. It changed everything for me, it changed my way of thinking changed the way I look at life. I absolutely have hope based on all the help that I've got. And I have hope for me, and I have hope for other veterans. There's always hope, even at the worst. Now when I feel like I'm at rock bottom, I'm like, well, there's only one way to go from here, and that's all.